I'm going to get you to dig out your old ankle weights and put both of them on one ankle because this is going to help to split the knee. So you're going to sit on a table or counter. Table would be better if possible just because we're going to be swinging our leg at one point. But in the meantime, we're just going to be sitting here because as I demonstrated with my fingers, it's going to help to spread apart the knee joint, which is going to help with any meniscus issues, especially if there was a part that was flipped over. This will help just to create a little bit of distraction so it flattens back out. It's also very good if you have um, any type of osteoarthritis. This will help give a little bit of relief. However, you'd need to do other things um, in terms of exercise that I'll demonstrate in the future. So you saw there that my leg moved a little bit. All I want you to do is just kick and then completely let it go. And eventually gravity will stop the leg from moving. So kind of just do that initial kick and just let it hang. If you're on a countertop, this will be a little bit more difficult because your leg will hit the back. So if you're on a countertop, then maybe just put a couple towels right behind your other knee so it gives a little bit more space for you to be able to try to attempt this. So as soon as it stops moving, that's when I want you to initiate the other movement. So this will create even more distraction. That's why we're doing it. And now I want you to turn your foot in and out. Now just to try to work your knee in an inward and outward position. Nice, slow, controlled movement. Good. Finish it off by doing that pendulum type of motion as soon as it's steady and kick again and let it hang. These are very, very effective techniques for the knee when it comes to meniscus and even pain behind the knee. We're also doing this to help stretch out a muscle called the popliteus muscle. This little guy can get pretty tight, so we're just prepping the area. Good, so we're gonna move on to the next one. So you're gonna grab a towel that's about the size of your fist. Okay, so just a hand towel or a tea towel. And then you're going to also grab a ball. So all I had was my dog's ball, <laughs> but you can use a tennis ball or a lacrosse ball, whatever you have around the house, maybe even a rolled up sock, something like that. So you're going to fold the towel in this specific way. Okay, so you're gonna fold the small ends in half so it looks like a rectangle like this and small though fold those small sides in half because what's going to happen is it's going to create like a little boat in between and that's where you're going to place the ball or tennis ball whatever you have and this will just help to keep that in place because this is going right behind your knee so where you feel the pain behind your knee that's exactly where you want this ball to be placed and then you're going to let the weights of the ankle weight just distract your knee even more and really get that optimal pressure right in behind the knee where you need it. So you may have to play around with it and adjust it like I just had to. 
until you get it at the optimal angle and wait a bit. And when you wait, you can gently move your toes inwards and outwards. So now if this pain behind your knee is more than a 7 out of 10, I want you to take a little bit of pressure off. And you can do that by rolling up another towel and putting that right underneath your thigh, close to where the ball is. Or you can just um, take a little bit of pressure off yourself by leaning back a little bit more. Eventually the pain will subside and go to about a 1 out of 10, which is just feeling the pressure, not the intense kind of releasing of the, the muscle tension. So you can slowly straighten your knee and not fully, you're just kind of initiating that. So you're maybe getting to 80 to 70 degrees nothing uh, too extreme Now inward and outwards of the toes again. So the popliteus muscle is responsible for what's known as a screw home mechanism. So that funny name is just a fancy way of saying as soon as you initiate the bend of the knee from a straight position, it turns inwards. And as soon as you straighten out your knee fully, the last five degrees it will rotate it outwards. So because of this, we have to work that inward and outward motion. Now when your toes are out, I'm going to get you to gently straighten the knee again, just to about that 80 to 70 degrees. Remember full knee um, being straight is considered a hundred. Most people are even in the negatives. And just play around with it. See, I'm leaning more back here because it's helping the tennis ball to get in a little better positioning right underneath my knee so that the muscle I'm targeting in the area I'm targeting is staying intact, so to speak. It's also very important for me to note that I don't want you feeling any numbness or tingling or burning. We have a lot of nerves um, behind here. We have a main nerve behind here. So if you're pressing on that and you're getting that numbness and tingling, you're going to have to reposition the ball a little bit so you don't feel that. You're not doing any damage, but it's also not great to have numbness, tingling, or burning, right? When you hit your funny bone in your elbow, it's not a pleasant feeling. So this position here, you're going to be essentially on a 90 degree angle with your legs. And if you need to, you can roll up a towel so that it's taking off a little bit of pressure if that was too much pressure. So you can feel around for where any tender spots remain and you're gonna place the ball right on that area that you just kind of felt. Now, if this is too much of an angle for you, you can go on to a couch, especially if your counter is too high or your table. This is about perfect height for me. And you're going to be moving around your ankle because, again, that will slightly get the ball onto a different area. Now I'm ready to move to the next step, which is removing that towel so I can put a little bit more pressure. But if that's again too much for you, then don't worry. So I had to hold the ball here as I straightened and flexed my leg. Now again, I'm getting it fully straightened this time because that will work the last bit of the fibers of the popliteus. Remember when it's fully straightened like this, it will turn that tibia, so the bottom of your leg, your shin part of your leg, will turn it outwards. And we want to make sure that's happening and the muscle isn't so tight that it's keeping it either inward or keeping it outward.
Now you're going to be turning your whole leg at your hip inward and outward. This will work again the muscle in different and different fibers. So now if we remove, we're going to slightly come back. So you see how I'm bringing my hip towards me is I take a little bit of more tension off. So if that was kind of your problem before, you weren't able to do it, that's how you can recover from this. So we'll sit up again and just let the leg hang again now that we've improved some range of motion because we helped to release the popliteus muscle a little bit more the leg should hang a little bit more freely so just really enjoy this moment here if this feels really good you can even pause this video here and hold this up to five to ten minutes if you'd like And really breathe here, focusing on the separation of the knee joint. So again, if that wasn't enough time for you, just pause it. But for now, if you're joining, joining us again, we're going to start working on the hamstring. So when I'm here, you see how I'm turning my hips outward and then back towards my leg and then I'm turning my hips away from the leg and then I'm turning my hips towards this is a very gentle maneuver to help and I'm going to show you with my fingers here how much I'm turning it's almost like a, a lighthouse lamp if that makes sense that turning this is just going to help to stretch different fibers of the hamstring because the hamstring muscles do come in and one of them inserts close to the back of the knee so this is why we just want to get all those muscles in behind the knee not just the popliteus like it most likely is now you're going to slightly lean forward inch by inch now if this is too much for you just stay upright this is all the beauty of doing these videos is it's based on your own level of flexibility, strength, all that. So you just do what you're capable of. And we'll slowly inch back up. Don't forget to breathe. Breathing is very important. Oxygen is very important. So you don't want to hold your breath. Now you're going to bring your knee close to you, or your whole leg shift close to you rather. So now instead of just your body moving, you're going to slide and glide your leg along the countertop or the tabletop or the couch, whatever level you're at. It might be a little bit more difficult to do it on the couch, so you might have to add some sort of more slippery type of surface or maybe even on your bed might be a good option as well. Good, I can do a few more here. Good, now help assist your leg down towards the floor. And we're going to take off the ankle weights at this point because we're going to start to work the feet. We need to have good support through our arches. So this is the exercise we're going to do for that. So our toes up, just the great toes, the big toes. Then put those flat, then lift the rest of the toes. So we're going to hold that for five seconds. Now we're going to hold this one for four seconds. And four seconds here. And three. Three. Two. Two. One. One. And keep switching back and forth. And eventually we'll do double time. 
So you can do this when you're standing in a lineup, Tim Hortons, or even when you're in your car in a lineup waiting for your coffee, or you're sitting at your desk, or you're sitting at the supper table and you want something to do. This would be a great exercise for you to practice to strengthen the arches of your feet. Very good support of the feet help with the legs. So now let's practice that toe off position I just demonstrated here. So the leg that you have, the sore knee, is the one you are going to toe off, like you see my leg in the back. So you're going to practice that motion with your toe because oftentimes we either fall too much in or we fall too much out on our baby toes, but we want to make sure that when we're pushing off, we're pushing off from that great toe as it propels us forward. So now the final step, you're going to point your toe, push it right off, and point it at the end. Again, we're strengthening the bottom of our arches. We're helping develop those neural patterns from our brain to our feet so we essentially learn how to walk properly again if we forgot how to. Maybe it was due to a past injury or we're trying to avoid the pain that we feel in our knee. But doing something right to have temporary pain to avoid long-term pain is always better than to avoid some pain in the temporary to risk having pain in the long term, if that makes sense. So you're going to step forward. So I'm going to move the camera back so you can see what I'm doing because we're gonna do a couple steps now. because so I want you to practice towing off like you're walking. So you're gonna push off with your great toe and you're gonna do that both sides when we get doing it, but just because we have a small space, we're just gonna be doing this walking motion. It's easier to control and the repetition really helps to develop those neural patterns. Really push off with that toe. It's your great toe that should be pushing you forward and propelling you forward, not any other aspect of your foot. So now I'm demonstrating on one foot. This is the end goal. So we're going to go up into the balls for heel and then slowly come down. So I want you to at first do it both feet. So go up both of your heels or your balls and then come down and go down onto your heels. And then set, reach up and propel yourself down. So this helps to reestablish your balance and to reestablish your center of gravity and your ability for your muscles to control. So notice how my knee is staying straight. It's not falling in, it's not falling out. So again, still go on two feet if you're just learning this, two feet, two feet, and come down and bend both your knees, trying not to let your knee fall inward as best you can as you balance. And come up, both feet on the balls of your feet, and come down, stack down, and really try to stabilize yourself. So if you're ready, try one foot. Make sure you're close to a wall to catch yourself. And as always, I want to thank you for taking time to watch this video. And please share this video if you know anyone in your life who would benefit from this. And as well subscribe if you love these videos and you want to be notified as soon as i release a new one subscribe so that you're one of the first to know thanks for all your support